Hello and welcome to another episode of Tea Time on Plus TV Africa as we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I have my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunke. It's hey. good, it's good. How are you doing? Well, How's your weekend? You? African coin. Like, is this is, is an essay viable, mm -hmm. Ghana vibe? I don't know, I'm just African. African, African. African. embodiment of Plus mm. TV Africa. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you doing? How was well, your weekend? Bless, bless, How's bless, yours? restful. <sighs> Fearful. Ah. That uh, was very heavy. Oh, you saw the numbers. the numbers. Yeah, six yeah. to seven. But it's it's really really crazy. The numbers yesterday terrified me. I'm still terrified. Like, and yeah, every day you see if it 32, too close. 32, 32 <laughs> cases confirmed. But thank you, thank you for reminding me. So you need to be reminded. Yes. No. I need to move my tea. I need to be reminded to move my tea far away mm. before droplets get in there. I don't mm. want no extra spice. <laughs> okay, let's start with um, a good deed. Um, Together at Home Concert raises $428 million for coronavirus healthcare workers. Global Citizen on Sunday announced that the worldwide virtual concert featuring the likes of Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Stevie Wonder, and Elton John, all performing from their homes, raised nearly $428 million for healthcare workers on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. Of the monies raised, $51.1 million um, will go to the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund and $72.8 million to local and regional responders. One World was organized by international advocacy group Global Citizen and Lady Gaga to benefit the World Health Organization's ongoing pandemic response effort. Amazing. Some Amazing. good news. I think yeah. this is really good. And um, I think um, Nigerian artists should take a cue from this instead of putting. Let's not call these Nigerian artists like Nigerian entertainment industry as yeah. a whole, because this is not um, what would I call it? It's not like a, a singular effort; it's mm. a collaborative effort. Yeah. So. And then they do something like that. Where they, were... they do it to entertain people and keep people busy at home and not miss them so much. They're not using it to raise money. Right. Even the one you are saying to entertain people at home is questionable as well. Yeah, because the, most yeah, of we'll them get are just there. doing we'll giveaways. Get no, giveaway is nice. Giveaway is necessary. It's People good. Are... No, giveaways to do something, but we will get there, like Elsie said. Uh, okay, so and for me, with this topic, um, I've been following it and everything, and it's there's actually a backlash to this people okay and i'm just bringing it to the table i'm not saying it's my thoughts so <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is that uh the celebrity culture is beginning to really irritate them i think the choice of songs for for people who already tick them off saying that we are in this together so there's this idea really going around even articles are coming out even from bbc's and the that. likes that that they're not the same why like they're very disconnected and that um we need to become more sensitive uh, we talked about ellen for example and all of that type of stuff so there's a lot of backlash that you guys are in some mansion we're not in this together the, the, whatever else are different um they did this beforehand before they started making um funds from it there were people coming out to say that and i think i can relate with that if you're not really doing much to help other people and you're just like re i don't know this i don't know it's something really weird about just trying to like say okay why we are experiencing the same thing together like i think it's very different but if they're coming together like this to then you know, raise awareness and things like that is fine. If you're always using your voice Has to... It, are, we, are we at your thoughts now? Or you're still telling us what this Okay, so there's two different things, like I said. Okay. I said if you're... I agree to the thoughts that if you are just doing... You're just saying out loud your... Mm -hmm. How, like, oh my gosh, we're in this together. And, um, you know, it's so hard for me. Kind of like Ellen with the whole... I feel like it's a jail prison and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a bit insensitive mm -hmm. and, like, disconnected because a lot of people have it way worse and i think they have to be aware of that um but in a case like this where they're in their fancy houses but they're still trying to help the community i agree with so there's right, so two different i things. totally agree with what you said but at the end of the day we're all in this together regardless <laughs> of how you want to look at it mm. whether i'm in my mansion whether i'm in my but can you know, I admit that they're those are very different contexts yeah they're very different contexts in the sense that um things are different for certain people but it doesn't mean that i'm not affected COVID by it or yeah. not things will always be different it would be different yes, for it will be yeah. different for everyone. My level of brokenness will be different from somebody else's level of, of brokenness. Do you understand? Regardless whether there's COVID-19 or there's no COVID-19, when I say I'm broke, it's going to be different from when a regular man on the street says he's, he's broke. broke. Or when Do you understand? Or when Ote Dolato can tell me that he's broke and I'm looking, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, 
I think Nigerian artists should focus more on raising funds for people that really need it instead of complaining about uh, they cancelled my show uh, and we have not been able to make money. No, that's not the point right now. Nobody is making money right now. All well, industry. You're making money. What? You're making money. I know Did you hear my breakfast order this morning <laughs> and you're telling me I'm making money? <laughs> okay, for me, I think what they've done is very commendable. I mean, using your ass right now to raise money for the frontliners is very commendable. But as regards reaction, personally, I don't even want to go there because I posted something on my Instagram yesterday and one of the lines there is basically saying that this is not the time to say Nami suffer pass or mm. Nami didn't affect pass. I feel like everybody's going through this in one way or the other. I wish I can be able to put how I feel right now in words because I know I'm sitting down here, I'm doing my job, but I know I'm not the person I was last week and I'm not feeling very fine, right? So, and all this is, it's not just about being able to eat or being able to feed or the fact that you're not um, getting the income you used to get. It's also, it also works with your mind and your mental health. So, We've always said it on this table that if we all can even come out, um, at least for those who have, have beat the virus and come out strong and still have your mental health intact, then you've done something good for yourself. It is. I don't think this is the time to start saying um, you are feeling any better or you're feeling any worse. Mm. Everybody's feeling this in one way or the other. And I just want to say that we should hang in there. I have to take my own advice right now. We need to hang in there and be strong because it is... Not a joke. I just hope when this is all over, people would begin to appreciate the little things and um, begin, begin to um, cultivate the saving culture because um, I Already think I'm also... Is. I think I'm also very guilty of that, you know, like, because you see, you see the money, you spend it. Yes, I do a little bit of savings, but well, I, want to save I want to save a whole lot more now in case there's any pandemic ever wow. again. <laughs> we see, I'm, I'm, in fact, I want a pandemic savings now. <laughs> like, so, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next story. If you use um, ODG, right, comments Ghana President Nana Akufo Adu as he leaves 21 days lockdown of its bigger city after the restriction brought the government enough time to improve its preparedness of the coronavirus pandemic. Fuse, via his official Twitter page, said, even though the lockdown has loosened, let's use our own heads and be extra cautious because if we lose God, we lose lives. Our president has done a great job so far, but we also have to be smart and not go out unnecessarily to avoid the cases going up rapidly, end of quote. Residents of the capital, Accra, and major centers are allowed to return to work from today, Monday. However, other restrictions such as school closures and a ban on sports and religious meetings remain in place. This is a country that is worried about the economy crashing. And it really saddens me that you want people to go back to work. What are the measures put in place? It's okay for you to say necessary workers can go back to work. As essential workers in the sense that you know that, okay, working from home is not working for you. But when you say everyone can go back to work, you're talking about plus the cleaners, plus the... Hygiene is something that... It's really, it's really necessary right now. Now, the cleaners can go back to work because hygiene is very important. But people that don't necessarily need to be at work do not need to be at work. Do you understand? But if you're saying everybody go back to work, now I'm trying to visualize how they're going to do the whole social distancing thing, the whole not encroaching in my personal space, mm -hmm. not touching my personal stuff and all of that. How, what are the measures now? They're saying go back to work. But I tried, I searched, and I'm like, okay, so if you're saying everybody can go back to work, what measures are you putting in place? How are they going to transport to work? Because not everybody has a car. So you're saying the church... No, they're, they're, they're taking off the lockdown. That's So they're going back to, to normal. Yeah, um, apart from schools. Yeah, so why uh, we... public um, gatherings and um, churches are not allowed. To me, yeah, so they're still... They're, I mean, I, I, I didn't really see it that way. I, I was, I've been very impressed by Ghana. Their numbers are very low. Mm. The death rates are very low. Community sharing is very low. They did practice um, what's it called? Staying at home. They actually and they have stayed the second highest at home. testing in Africa. That's they, about sixty thousand tests um, done per, so far. Yeah, and and um, what's it called? Their population is quite little, so um, it was easy for them to. Well, not, not, I'm not even going to say population. I think their government is just on top of their game. Active. Um, and it was easy. For, it was easy for them to realize that they don't have a pandemic. They have coronavirus in town, but it wasn't like. Insane and out of control and all I that stuff. I want to make you so, think this going back to work is not going to boost the numbers. 
Well, I think because, for me personally, I think because their health experts have, have been able to recognize the patterns okay. and see that they don't have an issue mm -hmm. with, with, um, with, um, with the, basically they're curbing it. And I think a lot of countries have actually done that. So um, Dominican Republic, I was talking to a friend that's there, same thing as well, like it's getting better. So you're, we're going to go back to reality soon. Mm. Like, and I think it's just happening for Ghana a lot faster. And let's not forget, these people started quarantining um, people before, before well, Nigeria yeah. did not even quarantine people anyway. They told us to go and, in our own advice, go and self-isolate. In Ghana, you couldn't actually leave the airport. They made facilities. Like, let's mm. not trip that these people have been on top of their game, heavy, mm. in regards to this thing. So, um, obviously, yeah, you still have to be careful as a citizen. And that's always up to you. Even if you're at home, people are still living their homes at home and can still catch it. So there's still that responsibility for you. But I think for a government, they're doing really well. Okay, so the reactions, I think okay, The reactions are, uh, of course, quite mixed reaction. But personally, for me, I feel like um, the president of Ghana understands the situation mm. because, like you said, he has the health um, people giving him feedback and yeah. letting him know that the measures they've taken uh, um, have worked to a certain extent. I'm not really a fan of this whole copy and paste mode of um, treating the coronavirus for every country. Yes, we can see the pandemic, like you said, in places like Italy, in the UK, in the United States of America. But in Ghana, would you say there was a pandemic? I, mm. I, I would not mm. agree with that. And also, um, I was having this conversation with someone over the weekend and I had to take us back to when Ebola crisis came came um, upon us. I mean, nobody locks down anywhere and I feel like the mentality of us thinking that the only way to solve this issue is total lockdown because we have seen the Western world do a lockdown and we have taken that idea and decided to just copy and paste it without trying to look at the peculiarity of our own situation to understand if this is what we need right now and if it is not, then how, what other way can we use to solve the situation? So for Ghana, I think they are on top of their game, like you yeah. said. I think they've put in a lot of measures to make sure that this thing, it does not become a pandemic in Ghana. Also, so they are producing their own marks, they are producing a lot of things mm. to make sure that they are self-sufficient mm. and can help themselves. So I, I'm not, nobody's hoping for it to go out of hand. Um, I'm sure some people are, are, are saying that that could happen, but I don't see that happening in Ghana. And I, I hope that lived in Ghana. Each, each country can sit down, critically look at the situation on ground and make wise decisions. Because if you're shutting down and say, oh, they locked down, um, in UK and you want to lock down, are you providing what the UK government is providing for their people mm. in I lockdown think, I, as well? I, so a lot of things have to come into play because even here we can, if we want to be sincere with ourselves, we can say that the lockdown has not been efficient. Okay, yeah. Social distancing has not happened. Mm. So if we are just acting, oh, let's sit in the house and some people still sneak out and do what they have to do, have we really done the right thing? I think those questions need to be answered by each country and their government. All right, so I haven't lived in Ghana and thinking about it now, I think they have always had that culture of social distancing and not encroaching in your space. Yeah, they're not even. crowded. Yeah, they're yeah. not crowded. They don't even come, like, I don't think they necessarily shake each other unless uh -uh. it's... No, 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 I'm saying, like, unless it's necessary, unless we're cool like that. It's not like Nigeria where a stranger will just call, hey, my brother, I beg. I, I actually mean. disagree. I think that Nigerians are not that... Um, I don't see anyone hugging me from nowhere, like, except I know my friends. Like, you, so you think it happens in me. Ghana? I, I, I think it's the same in terms of um, um, social interaction. The only thing I can say is that they're not as crowded because, you know, there are a lot mm, less population. people and they just don't have population problems. But I, I, I think, would, I think I would, they have um, respect for I would disagree with the Ghana. copy and paste thing. I think everyone does need social distancing because of the way uh, the virus works. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's just common sense that if something is... Um, if it's, is, not able is, to if it's passed by, if it's passed by droplets and things like that, then you need to be able to like distance yourself from that person's other drop, droplet. Um, Why did the, you move? The, <laughs> the fact that Nigerians are not now following that doesn't mean that the system in it, the method in itself is wrong. It just means that we're not executing that, and that's just been Nigeria's problem. Like we've had good initiatives, but the implementation is bad, and I don't think implementation takes away from the initiative in itself. So. Uh, I just wanted to put that yeah, out Yeah, but I think, uh, well, I think it's time for a but, break anyway. Okay. So let's go on a quick break. And when we come back, we'll definitely have more to discuss.
Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I just see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do it. Everybody feeling alright. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. This is Duty Time on Plus TV Africa. Davido's fiancé, Chioma, test negative to COVID-19. Davido made this known via a statement on his Twitter page yesterday. Congratulations so to her. So, yeah. so happy about that. Um, it's it's not a... It's just not one of the things where we can say, oh, your money saved you. Nah, like, this is mm -hmm. literally, like... Mm -hmm human biology like away from every type of privilege so you can't even bring that into the mix so she has done something for herself and for, for her life and god has pretty much just given her grace for that so i'm happy for her i'm happy that she can go back to her baby and yeah very um, important and you know bond and all of that type of stuff so i wonder i'm hoping that she can i know she's it's not really in her character not that that she has um, display chat, but I'm hoping that she comes out to like give us an insight on the experience and how it was like if the mm. nurses were good and like the state of the place and other people because I think a lot of us don't really know you what's think happening. She would have been quarantined in, in, in your regular place. I well, even I, I, I don't think she'll be the only person it would in have there. Been like, a top -notch I think there's service. a rich people there. I don't think there's there a top notch about the, COVID yes, 19. There, like, ah, there, there is. is. Oh, there, there is. There's, 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 there's <laughs> a private there is, for sure. I think that's center. where she was. Yeah, of course. Well, wherever Mega she States, was, however she was treated, I'm like happy that. that she is well and can go back to her child. I think that's the most important thing yes. right now. As, as far as I'm concerned, too, I've been worried about her because considering the fact that she just had a baby mm. and then it's just been a few months and then you're away from your child, that alone can be depressing and lead anyone into depression, the fact that you're not with your baby. And thank God nothing happened to her because imagine if we lost a trauma and then mm. Davido is left with a fine. Do you understand? That would have been really, really, really sad and would yeah. have taken a toll on David Doe himself. So this is something that would have affected every party involved, the child, the father, and the mother. So I like the fact that um, I'm, I'm really glad that she came out of this st and I, um, strong and... Um, I, have a, I have a feeling that and, she was asymptomatic throughout, though, because... Uh, maybe, I don't know. Like I said, I wanted to come out and explain what was No, I don't think. Even when on. she heard it, was David who said it. She didn't come out to release any statement. She didn't. She just went off social but media. But did you notice that her and social media was still active? Yeah, obviously. Even when she was... No, of course, um, somebody would be managing that, but I don't think mm, she I, would that's, I, that's the thing. I, I don't think so, because pe there's people that... There's one person I know, obviously, I can't say, but there's one person I know that's in the isolation center that has his phone. Yeah. No, they and all have that. their phones. That's what I'm saying, that I'm, I suspect that she's asymptomatic in the sense that she wasn't, like, crippled with, like, a ventilator and, like, really, really sick. Like, I think she actually had it well. So, like I'm saying, I want her to please come out Share if she can. Experience. And, yeah, and tell to us how... To motivate other people. I just want to know what, what her experience was like, but, yeah. Yeah, but I'm really glad. I'm really glad for their family. And then I just hope um, this is a lesson to everyone that, man, we only have one life to live. Mm. And for everyone who is surviving as well, we are glad you're surviving. And hopefully, you are, of course, you're a source of hope to everyone who also tests them positive mm -hmm. to this and feel better. Okay, so also, moving sorry. on, Nigerians... This is also a lesson that COVID-19 is not a death sentence for yeah, those definitely. that have been thinking a it's a death right. sentence. Mm. Sure. So Nigerians are calling for an apology. Let me just say some Nigerians, please. Not all Nigerians. They are calling for apology for Funke Akindele after watching Abakiari's um, burial, on, which was televised, on t was televised, basically. So um, I don't know. That was... Of course, there was no social distancing from the clip we saw, but is that enough to call for an apology for Funke Akinele? Um, well, I think people are getting it wrong now. This is the federal government. They, um, it was a state government that put the whole um, punishment on Funke Akinele. So we need to separate the federal government from the Lagos state government. Secondly, I also agree that 
some level of measure should be taken against these people because there was no sense of social distancing whatsoever. I don't know if you saw all the videos that were circulating of uh, a guy that cleaned his eyes and cleaned, blew his nose and cleaned his hands and put the same handkerchief in his pocket. And the NCDC worker that was looking around and was removing his white um, yeah. uh, preventive garments. Yeah. And I saw a statement do. Of course, people are saying they don't believe it, but they're saying everybody who attended the burial are now being self-isolated somewhere. I hope We hope so. that is true. So why would you even bother to do that in the first place? That these are educated yeah. medical staffs. Like, apparently these are people that work in the isolation mm. sense. Like, are you kidding me? Okay, so I've never seen this anyway, 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 in any news that people are burying anybody with COVID-19. I've mm -hmm. never seen it. I, I, I checked on the site and I don't, it wasn't clear that you can't bury someone, but I've never seen it either. Because I thought like Ebola, you're more even contagious or whatever when you're dead. So either ways, it doesn't make any sense to then risk that. I am going to uh, acknowledge though that this is the chief of staff of Nigeria. No matter. I, I, and I personally think it matters. I think that there's, there, there is privilege and there is, that for some people, to whom much is giving, much is it expected. It could have and done there it is, a better way though. Yes, I think that he should have been given, like he, ha you would have to be treated differently because he was a different. We could have um, attended online. Citizen, but I, so I'm not really going to sit here and say that I don't think he deserved a, uh, a what's it called a. A burial, but I think that the burial could have been a lot less people because I don't think everyone in that gathering was also important and had to be there. Mm -hmm. Like if you said, okay, this is the chief of staff of the country that has literally served his like he served the country. He died because he was working for the country. So I can understand that, but does everyone need to be there? Like why he do you died because have... he didn't pay attention to COVID nineteen and traveled to Germany? Mm, well, no, I mean, but you were sent on an official it assignment. Be, it could have been Which is what I'm saying. Assignment. It is all a collective irresponsibility because it's we're all seeing the COVID-19. It was an order from who? We're all seeing the COVID-19 and they were watching it when he traveled really. to that country. <laughs> so I feel like the fact that we're even here is a problem that was brought on us on those that were not watching and paying attention mm. so that is i mean because I, they I got for me somebody on this table had covid 19 you know they'll say the same thing to that why are you on this table so i, I think that if you mm. have a duty to to fulfill you should go do it mm. um and be careful about it people have done the same thing and i didn't get covid 19 so for me that's not i think it's a bit unfair but the the irresponsibility is that you're gathering there you're squashing yourselves and not doing there was the right no thing. form of social distancing they were all packed together that is just so wrong and i hope what you said is true that they are all being quarantined yeah right that's now. what the statement said all right that's how i wrap up this episode of tea time thank you for watching and join the conversation on social media with the hashtag tea time or tweet at us at plus tv africa remember you can catch up on this episode and all exclusive content by subscribing to our youtube channel at plus tv africa also watch tea time on also tv and in london on ben television my thank you as always go to my co-anchors ife omai and ife Lua Shunke and the entire production team thank you for watching plus tv africa's tea time my name is elsie godwin do stay safe